there is no other name in heaven and in earth wherein we might be saved and by that name Jesus wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting Father Prince of Peace our Redeemer our Deliverer our Savior our Healer our Provider everything not something, everything. <laughs> oh, thank God for his son. I love how Paul said it. He, he didn't think it was robbery to be with God, but he humbled himself, took on the form and fashion of a servant of a man became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And I'm so thankful that God has given him a name that's above every name so that every knee now shall bow, every tongue confess that he's Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Paul's letter to the uh, church at Thessalonica. And God has given the story. Are you hooked up with Jesus? Are you connected with Jesus? Is your life and your living, has it come under the subjection to the power, the authority, and the will of God through his son, Jesus the Christ? Has your sins been forgiven? Has your soul been purged by his blood? Has he become now a, a personal friend who walks with you and talks with you, who, who leads and guides you? Are you really in alignment with him and what he is all about? We want to look at this this morning as we see Paul as he deals with this church, this early church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We adore you. Wouldn't have anyone beside you. No one knows us quite like you do. You know our ups. You know our downs. You know the desires of our heart. Lord, we praise you that you've given us your son. We couldn't wash away our sins. We, we, we could not prepare ourselves. We couldn't do enough to be holy and righteous in your sight. But oh, I thank you now that the righteousness of your son has been placed upon all of us. God, we praise you. We thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. For he speaks to us. He leads, he guides us. He convicts. 
He transforms. He opens up the door for us that we might see the light and we can follow that path. Bless us now. These are times, God, when we, we need to know you. So many things are going on around us. War, rumors of war. Mother against daughter, father against son. God, we're a divided nation even now. We need you, Lord. Speak to us. Strengthen us that we might serve you in spirit and in truth. And may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be accepted in your sight. For you are our Lord, our strength, and our awesome redeemer. Amen. Are you connected? Are you lined up? God has been doing some unusual things here at Progressive. I must admit that I've been in ministry over 40 years but I have never had the experience of being with people who have an aggressive preoccupation with God's word I've taught all over been so many places but you all have blessed my heart because it is a delight to take time and prepare so that we can feast on God's word together. It's, and I can't thank all of you and particularly our leadership and when I think in terms of our diaconate, I can't thank you all for giving me the freedom to be not only God's spokesperson here, but also to be a worshiping participant in the service that God has. It's, uh, I, this is the first time I've sang in a choir since I left college. And, and what a blessing. I, I know it's not customary for the pastor to be up there. But who said we had to conform to custom? <laughs> Thank you all for the freedom to worship and to, and to also be me. Because so often people place those in pastoral ministry on a pedestal. But if the truth would be told, I'm just a sinner saved by grace it still is a gift of God not anything I have done and so I thank him and I thank you because it's awesome to be considered the cook <laughs> and so today as we move forward we want to make sure that we are linked we are hooked we are connected there has there, there has been some crazy glue that has been placed on us that has us attached to Jesus. Every now and then you just need some crazy glue. <laughs> it, it sticks to flesh instantaneously. All glory. And so I'm thankful. I, we just want to deal with this idea because we're living in a time when it's... Uh, it, it is apparent that God is doing something. Yes. It's apparent. We, we don't know. We don't uh, claim to make a statement prophetically that this is the end. No. But I do know God is doing something. <laughs> we find Paul saying here in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter one. I'm going to start with verse four. 
And I'll read it from here because it's a little bit easier for me to see this than it is for me to see that. Uh, mm. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power for the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you, you know of our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece throughout both Macedonia and Achaia. And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us and how you turned away from idols to serve the living and true God. And they speak of how you are looking forward to that coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. Let's dig in. Are, are, are we are chosen, we are confirmed, and we are cared for. I, I, I want all of us to understand that we've been chosen. God has chosen us. He has, he has, he, in spite of who we are and where we came from, what our backgrounds are, in spite of what we've done, what we failed to do, what we've accomplished and what we didn't accomplish. In, in spite of our, our meanness, our arrogance, our, our pridefulness, in spite of our sinfulness, our way of thinking, our hatred sometimes, our, our prejudices and our idiosyncrasies, God chose us. My, my, my. He, 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 he loved us enough that, that, that our issues, were of no concern to him. He chose you. He chose me. That, that's good news today. We are God's chosen people. I, I, Peter says we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. He, he, he has transformed us. He's brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we now live as living epistles who are to show forth his glory and his praise. God has chosen us. Amen. My, my, my. I, anybody ever been uh, uh, overlooked? You, you did something that was worthy of notice. But somewhere along the line, the lines got blurred. The, the, the selection process got skewed. Something happened where, where your name was, was, was left off. It, it might have been a, a mere matter of, of, of someone wasn't thinking. It may have been deliberate, but, but you know what it's like to, to know that you were over Look, my, 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 God didn't do that to us. <laughs> he, he, his, his, his calendar isn't so congested and so filled where he doesn't have time to take a look at all of us. I, I, I'm so glad that, that, that he does not allow our, our height, our width, our intellect, our ability. I'm glad he doesn't allow those things to get in the way of his selection process. God says he, he chose us and we are his. But not only are we just chosen, he confirmed our relationship. You see, he says here, we know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with 
power for the Holy Spirit. Look at this. The Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what was said was true. All of us, if we're believers, we, we've got the Spirit of God who confirms us. Lord, have mercy. When the Spirit comes in and takes residence in our lives, he, he fulfills the promise that Jesus gave those disciples back in that last conversation in the upper room when he said, I, I, I've got to go. And you remember their hearts were troubled. And he told them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. You, you know, they questioned him about eternal life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father but by me. But they were disturbed. And he says, oh, don't worry about it because I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to give you another comforter. The Holy Spirit of promise. His job is to reprove you of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. He's going to shine the light on your life. And, and, and if, if the Holy Ghost is doing anything at all, he's showing up in our lives. He, he has a way of letting you know when you're right and when you're wrong. If you're really a child of God, he, he does not allow you to go through life romanticistically thinking that you're all that. No, what he does is he comes and he gives you a mirror image of you. That's why we examine ourselves. That's why we're supposed to take a, a note of ourselves. We, this, this is not a, 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 a process of being nosy. When the Holy Spirit comes in, he doesn't set you free to become a fruit inspector for other folk. But when he comes in, he, he comes in and he begins to light up the stuff that's in your life. And, and if he's doing anything at all, he's doing a work on each one of us. That's why I love that expression. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I don't care how much I've grown. Does not matter how many things he has done through me. I'm not a finished product yet. The Spirit of God is still working on the inside. Amen. Amen. He's helping me to deal with my issues. And I'm so glad that he, if we were to look at the Trinity, he, he is God's maintenance engineer. Lord have mercy. When, when something gets broke in your life, it's his job to come in and to take a look at you. And, and, and if there needs to be some tearing out and some regeneration, it's his job to do it. I'm, I'm so glad he's the maintenance engineer. When, when, when you get beside yourself and out there, it's amazing how he can come in and he knows how to put a, put a pinhole in your balloon and cause you to deflate and allow you to begin to see yourself like you ought to see yourself. It's amazing when he gets in. You start to admit to those folk who know you, great God from Zion. He starts you saying things like, I was wrong. I love you. I forgive you. He, he, he helps us to say to one another, I, I understand. And I'm there with you. He confirms that we are children of God because he works on us. He's not somebody we stick on somebody else. Oh, no. We invite him on in and say, come on in and make your residence in our hearts that you might, you might present us unto God yeah. as instruments of righteousness. He, he, he cares for us. He, and you know of our concern for you. 
from the way we lived when we were with you. That word care is deep. Every member of this fellowship is a believer. Every believer is called to be a witness. But I love what he says to us about being connected with Jesus. When we're connected with him, we're connected one with another. Th that's why these, these care groups that God has, has broken us up into are so much a vital part of our existence because herein is where we get to know one another. Here is when we get to understand. Here is where we begin to share our sorrows, share our joy. It's here we begin to pray one for another. It's here where we begin to understand what people need. And, and God calls us together in a caring, loving community. When, when you're hooked up with Jesus, you've got to be hooked up in the body of Christ. We're all a part of this body. I love that song. I believe Hezekiah Walker made it. I love you. You love me. We're all part of God's, his body. I need you. You need me. I'm going to pray for you. As you pray for me. You know, I love these words. I, 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 I'm not going to harm you with words from my mouth. Because I love you. And if I love you, I can't talk bad about you behind your back. If I really love you, I want to lift you up. I don't want to tear you down. He puts us in this caring and loving environment. What does it mean to be hooked up? Your reputation should be consistent with your conviction. Your reputation. What people say about you. Is it consistent? When your name is called in a group, of unconcerned citizens. What are the comments that they say about you? When, when, they, when, they, when they assess your walk, your talk, does it line up with who you claim to be, a child of God? What's going on in the public setting? E even Jesus was mindful to ask the question, whom do men say that I am? What are they talking about when they talk about me? You ought to be concerned about your reputation and its consistency with your conviction. We claim to be children of God. Shouldn't people see God? If God is so big and so wide that you can't get around him, if he's so tall that you can't get over him, and if he can be so low that you can't get under him and he lives in you, shouldn't he shine through sometimes? Shouldn't it be obvious who you are based upon your activity, your livelihood, your mannerism, your conversation? your compassion, your concern. So you receive the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. It's going to cost you something 
to be a believer. Salvation is free, but it's not cheap. It costs us something to be believed. See, I heard him when he says, except we deny ourselves and pick up the cross and follow him, we can't be his disciples. He raised that question about our soul and asked the question, is it valuable to us? For what does it profit us to gain the whole world and lose our soul? There, there ought to be some examination going on. And at the forefront of our walk with God, there has to be a sacrifice. Saying no to yourself isn't easy. But if you're going to be a servant of God, we have to adopt that same posture that Jesus did. Not my will be done. Lord, your will. I'm going to sit on me so that you can work through me. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to align my desire, my will with yours so that what you want for me becomes what I want for me. I, I don't know what I need. You, you know what I need better than I do. So I'll tell you what, God, I'm going to stop trying to arrange my life and, and make things good. Try, no, no, I'm going to say, Lord, lead me. Guide me. Show me what I ought to love. Help me to be strong enough to turn away from that which is contrary to your will. Look what he said. In this way, you imitate both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example. You see it? When we leave here, after the benediction, you know, after the hugs and the fellowship that will go on, after we finished with, with the competition that's going to happen with, with First Lady when she, she ends this thing, and, and, and I've been smelling uh, um, um, meatballs. All night. After the meatballs. He, look what he's asking us to do here. He's saying you must become an example to all believers. He talks about in Greece. He didn't say in the church. He didn't say in Jerusalem. He says wherever you go, you ought to be an example to all believers. Live so folk can see something in you. Lives, talk so that they can understand that you've fallen in love with Jesus. And, 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 and there's nothing greater to you than him. Don't just sing about it. Lord have mercy, be about it. <laughs> Look what he says to us. Everywhere beyond Macedonia and Acadia, for wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith. We can do this. Y'all remember how he taught us? Talking to progressive men. And our friends who are visiting, I just want to let you in on something God gave us. He, he told us when we first formed to name our left foot trust. Our right foot obey. He told us to name this left hand and this right hand. One of them's name is goodness. And the other is mercy. And he told us that everywhere we go, we go based upon the ability he's given us to move with this left and this right foot. So no matter where we find ourselves, we have to learn how to trust God and obey God. Doesn't matter what's going on. We've got to trust God. We've got to obey God. Doesn't matter what's happening on Capitol Hill. We've got to trust him and obey him. Trust him. 
we obey him. People see the difference. We're not worried about your credentials. We're not concerned about your accolades. Your talent, your ability is not important to us. What concerns us is your devotion, your commitment, your relationship with God. It, it, it causes us to trust him in everything. Because I'm going to tell you, some folk are upset now. Yes, they are. There's a mad sister down in Florida. Because somebody lied on her. Y'all hear me? But, 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 but for us, who trust in God? We don't have to get all mad and bent out of shape. Because he told us he will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on him. Why? Because we don't trust in ourselves. We don't trust in one another. We don't trust in elected or unelected officials. Our trust is in God. He says everywhere they go, people are telling about their faith, their trust, their allegiance. My, my, my. It can even happen, y'all, in the bowling alley. <laughs> Let's move now. Is your passport and visa stamped heaven bound? There's no other name in heaven and in earth, whereby we can be saved, but that name, Jesus. No Christ, no crime. Doesn't matter what you accumulate. I've never seen a U-Haul or a trailer filled with stuff folk accumulated in life following a hearse to the cemetery. <laughs> I want to let you know that his grace does not cover your cargo. It covers your soul. Y'all hear me? Make sure that your calling and election has been sure. And they speak now of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's son from heaven. I'm letting you all know right now. Korea could come. Iran can come. Pakistan can come over here. China. Russia. Don't care to me. Because this is not my home. Now don't, don't, I'm not crazy now. I love Six Archdale Road. Anybody know me know I'll talk about Six Archdale Road. You, you come by there, most of the time you're going to see me in, in the garage. <laughs> working on something. Fixing something. Because I'm going to, I love it there. But I know that that's not my home. It's a beautiful house. It's accommodating. It has everything I need. I just, just went and took some old treated lumber and made me a little scaffold and hung all my rods and reels up on the wall just to be thankful because if God blesses you to get something, you ought to take care of it. I, I just stood up there yesterday just looking, just marveling. Oh, Lord, look.